Hey everybody, I think I have maybe the foundational video for theory of the firm in microeconomics. You know that part of the curriculum when you get to perfect competition, monopolistic competition, and monopoly. When you get there, guys, and you're talking about the product market, that's right, markets for goods and services, this is the video, okay? Because here's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about the big three curves, the big four curves, and the big five curves. And don't worry, the big four curves is just the big three plus one, and the big five is just the big four plus one, okay? And so these five curves are the key to just about every single question you're ever going to get. So I want to make it very clear. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the big three curves in theory of the firm. The big three is demand, MR, and MC. Okay. Now I say it in that order, demand, MR, and MC, because really to find the MR curve, you need the demand curve. So I say demand, MR, because you need that demand curve to find MR and MC. But here's the kind of way I want you to approach it when you draw them, which I'm going to do in just a bit, is MR and MC that intersection point finds you output. That is key, right? Profit maximizing output or loss minimizing output is MRMC. That is the key to finding output. Once you have output, head to your demand curve to find price, right? Once you have output, go to the demand curve to find price. So there you go, the big three. What do they find for you? Price and output for a firm. That's what the big three do. You pretty much always need to be able to find price and output. Now, the big four is just the big three, finding price and output with those big three, plus ATC. When do you need ATC? Straightforward, guys, if you are asked about profit or loss. That's right. Any question about profit or loss, display profit or loss, find profit and loss, you need those big three, plus you need ATC. ATC is the key to finding profit and loss. Then finally, the big five, which is just the big four, plus AVC. Now, you don't always need the big five. You only need this AVC curve, the AVC curve, if a firm is currently incurring losses. That's pretty much the only time it's gonna come up. And if a firm is incurring losses, why do I need AVC? AVC is the key to determining whether or not a firm should shut down or operate in the short run, okay? So let's review really quick and then let's get to the graphs. Big three, demand MRMC. MRMC, key to output. Demand, key to price. Great, got price and output from the big three. Moving on, I'm asked about profit and loss. Oh, I need the ATC curve also, great. Finally, the big five, the fifth curve that you're gonna need. AVC, and you only need it if the firm was making losses, and if they were making losses, I need AVC to determine whether or not the firm should operate or shut down. Okay, so with that said, let's get to the graphs, right? Because that's a lot of words. It makes it a little bit easier when we actually see the graphs. I've got our two major market structures, which is perfect competition, and then some type of market power, whether it's monopolistic competition or monopoly, okay? So perfect competition. I've already put price market, price firm. So remember, when you do perfect competition, you'll often draw a graph to the left, and that will be of the market, the entire market. But remember, you're doing theory of the firm, so you're also gonna have a graph of the firm, of a single firm. So this is my graph of a single firm. Why would I go over here to this market graph where I have supply and demand is to find the market price, right? So I go to the market, I find the market price, and then I bring that price over to find price firm because in perfect competition, guys, the firm, a single firm in a perfectly competitive market is a price taker. That's right, they're taking the market price, that becomes their price. And why did I tell you all that? Because hey, that is the key to understanding the demand curve the firm faces. Not the market demand curve, the demand curve this individual firm faces. Well guys, they face a flat or perfectly elastic demand curve, demand firm, not demand market. What do I mean by that? Well, since this is perfect competition, they have no pricing power. If they try to raise the price at all, the quantity demanded will go to zero. That's a perfectly elastic demand curve. Again, because there are exact identical products being sold by a bunch of other firms out there. So this firm has no pricing power. So the demand curve for their products that they make, this individual firm, is completely elastic, saying they have no pricing power. If they try to raise the price at all, quantity demand is going to go to zero. So again, price market gives me price firm. Price firm gives me the demand firm. Now, not only that, that also gives me the MR curve. Well, what is MR? The additional revenue I get from producing one more good. Well, here's the deal, guys. In perfect competition, 
we basically say this firm, they can't raise the price at all, but they can sell as much as they want at the market price. At this price, which is the market price, they can sell as much as they want at that price. So MR, the additional revenue for making one more unit of output. Well, what's the additional revenue I'm going to get? I'm going to make the price. I'm going to earn the price market for every additional good that I produce. So guess what? It is the demand curve which is great. So therefore, out of the big three curves, we've already got two. The final curve is MC. Generally, what we're going to do is draw MC. It doesn't always have to be this way, but generally, we're going to draw MC upward sloping, okay? Now, you kind of assume there's a little break in my graph if you want to, because truly, if we went all the way to the first unit of the good, there'll probably be some portion of the MC that's going down, representing increasing returns, okay? But then eventually it's gonna represent some decreasing marginal returns, okay? And so that's what we generally show is that upward sloping MC curve. But again, here's the big thing. I've got the big three. I've got MR, MC, and demand. Now, here we go to find what we're gonna be asked to find. Output, gonna be asked all the time. Output is all about a marginal decision. MR, which is the marginal benefit of making another good to the firm. That's right, marginal revenue. MR is the marginal benefit of making another good. Here's my marginal cost. Just some basic marginal analysis says, hey, for every one of these goods, we're gonna produce them as long as that MB, which is MR, right, marginal benefit, to the firm is their marginal revenue. As long as that marginal revenue, okay, exceeds the marginal cost. So right here is we're gonna stop producing. That's gonna be our profit maximizing amount. There it is, Q profit max, right there, okay? So we've got the output. Now let's find the price, and here it is. For perfect competition, you basically say you've already got it, and you're right, you already have the price. We're going to say it kind of like an interesting way because it's going to help us out when we get to market power. I'm going to say it this way. Once you know the output, okay, go to the demand curve. And the demand curve is basically going to show us the highest price that we can charge and still sell that level of output. So let me say that again. Go to the output and then take the output to the demand curve because it's going to show us the highest price we can charge and still sell that level of output. Now again, for perfect competition, you might be saying, I can see it, there's the price, and you are right. But what I just said, you'll see me play out here and it'll make a little bit more sense when I get to this market power. So let's recap. I got the big three and guess what? I've got output and price, fantastic. Now I'm asked about profit and loss and I'm asked maybe to show a loss. Got it. Let's go show a loss. Now I need my ATC curve. Profit or loss, I need ATC. Here's the big thing. I'm going to show my uh, ATC curve so that it is above the price, okay, when I get to this level of output. So I'm just going to go way up here, draw it downward sloping all the way to the MC because it needs to be downward sloping to the MC, and then draw it upward sloping as we cross the MC line, there you go. But even more importantly, I made sure that the ATC is above P at that level of output. Let me say that again. I made sure the ATC was above P at that level of output. Let me go ahead and label it right there, ATC. Guys, they're making losses. If their average total cost is above their per unit revenue, which is what price is, they are making losses. Another way to say it is, P, okay, so P times Q, so this right there is total revenue, ATC times Q is total cost. This rectangle right there, hopefully you can see it right there, that rectangle is going to be my losses. Now, the next question I might get is, now that you're showing losses, show a firm that would actually shut down in the short run. Okay, if I want to show a firm that's going to shut down the short run, I need to make sure AVC, average variable cost, is above P, price uh, uh, per unit revenue, right? AVC, average variable cost, is above per unit revenue, which is just the price, when I get to Q. That is the key. So here I'm going to go down, okay, all the way to the MC again, then bring it up. I'm going to try to narrow in a little bit on my ATC to show that average uh, fixed cost would actually diminish as output increases. So they should narrow in on each other. This right here is my important dot. Okay, that's an important dot. That's an important dot. Draw this dot over right there. AVC. 
this firm is shutting down. Why is this firm going to shut down? Here's the key. ATC minus AVC, okay? So ATC minus AVC is AFC, average fixed cost. So this vertical distance between these two is average fixed cost. Multiply that times the Q, and that makes this rectangle fixed cost. That would be our losses if we shut down. So if we shut down, what are our losses? ABC to that dot right there over to there. That would be our losses if we shut down. If we operate, what would be our losses? Well, if we operate, what would be our losses is ATC down to price, okay? That's right, those are our losses per unit times the Q. That rectangle is bigger, so if we operate, our losses would be larger. Hey, let's shut it down and only incur our fixed costs, and only incur our fixed costs. There you go, that was perfect competition. Now let's have it play out for market power, for monopoly. So what do we do? Well, remember what I say about the big three, demand MRMC. So this time I am gonna make sure I draw that demand curve first. Now that's demand market and it is demand firm because once you get market power, there's no side-by-side -side graphs ever. The demand market is the demand firm. And if we assume there is no price discrimination, the fact that we have this downward sloping demand firm right there means that our MR is gonna be twice the slope in absolute value term, MR. So again, demand key to finding MR. I've got two of my big three curves, bring in the MC, there we go, MC. Great, big three, demand MR, MC, there you go. Now find output. Well, how do we find output? MR, MC every single time. MR is exceeding MC for all of these goods. Where do they intersect? They intersect right there. I bring it down, I say, okay, I have found my uh, quantity profit max right there. It's the best we can do. Or quantity loss min if we operate, right? If we operate. So that's my output. Now I need to find price. So remember, big three curves. MRMC gives you the output. Demand is the key to finding price. Demand is the key to saying, hey, what's the highest price that I can charge and still sell this level of output? Remember, that's what my demand curve is gonna tell me. Hey, I know this is profit max. What's the highest price I could charge and still sell this level of output? Oh, I need to go to my demand curve. That's right, there it is, price monopoly, if you will, or monopolistic competition. Again. MR, MC, key to output, demand curve right here, demand curve key to price. So MR, MC, key to output, demand curve key to price. Once you find that output, head to the demand curve, there's your price. Great, P and Q. Now, again, you're asked to show losses. Oh, okay, so losses. Need to make sure ATC is above my P when I get to this level of output, no problem. There we go. Downward sloping all the way to MC, then upward sloping. Oops, need to put ATC. There it is, ATC. And go back to this level output, head up to the ATC curve. There it is, ATC. So I now have my losses if they operate, right? Again, P, this vertical distance times Q, horizontal distance, gives us this rectangle that's total revenue. ATC times Q gives us total cost. So what does that mean? If we operate, our losses are gonna be this rectangle right there. Price out to the Q, up and over back to the ATC. That's our losses if we operate. Now you get that final one. Final question says, okay, they're incurring losses. Show a firm that would operate in the short run. Okay, they would operate in the short run. Now I wanna make sure AVC is below P when I get to Q. So let's do it. Let's put this, it's a little bit messy, but right there, I made sure, even though that's above that dot, that doesn't matter. What's important is my AVC line is below that dot. There's my price, okay, there's my price. So I made sure AVC was below P when I got the Q. I made sure AVC was below P when I got the Q. Let's go ahead and finish it off. We'll narrow in a little bit on the ATC. I'm gonna grab that dot right there. That's so important. I'm gonna keep highlighting that dot and that dot. Those dots alignment with Q are so important. Bring this over, AVC. If we were to shut down, ATC minus AVC, okay, this vertical distance from here to here is AFC. That's my average fixed cost times my Q, oh my goodness, this rectangle is my 
fixed cost. That's my losses if I shut down. If I operate, what will be my losses? Oh, if you operate, what will be your losses? That's just ATC to P right there, right? ATC to P over to Q, that rectangle. If I operate, my losses are just that amount. If I was to shut down, it would be all the way ATC down back over here to AVC. Mm -mm. I'm going to operate. I'm not shutting down in this particular case. All right, guys, let me recap. Watch this video twice also, guys, because it is the foundational video. Here you need. Here's how I want you to think about when you get to theory of the firm, especially the product market, those goods and services market, which again is about 80% of the focus in theory of the firm. The big three curves, demand, MR, MC. Demand gives you MR, demand gives you MR, then you need MC. MR and MC, key to output. MR, MC, marginal analysis, key to output. Demand curve, key to price. Now with those big three curves, you have price and output. Then ATC is the fourth curve. That's the fourth curve. You need ATC when asked about profit and loss. The fifth curve, AVC, you only need if the firm's making losses and you're asked if they're going to shut down or not in the short run. Anyhow, hope that video made sense to you. Watch it a couple of times. It will help you so much in theory of the firm. We'll see you next time.